Joel Embiid made a ridiculous play here, but appeared to aggravate and potentially re-injure his knee again. And in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at what is going on here and why I'm just concerned about how sustainable this is for the rest of the playoffs. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. Now, we have seen Embiid re-aggravate this knee now for the third time, I believe, since he came back from his knee surgery. And every time we've seen him limp off the floor, there's concern about him coming back, but then he's been able to. But I'm concerned about how much repetitive irritation, inflammation, potential re-injury could be happening here to Embiid's knee with all of these episodes and just the sustainability of it. Of course, we're dealing with Embiid's left knee. As you all probably know, Embiid underwent a surgery that was reported by a lot of outlets as a meniscus repair, but based on his recovery time was almost certainly a surgery where they removed part of Embiid's meniscus, specifically the lateral meniscus on that left knee. Here as Embiid goes up and makes this just unbelievable alley-oop to himself, as he comes down, we see how he lands on a pretty straight left leg with a little bit of twist in that knee and then ultimately falls down to the ground clutching at that knee. Now, thankfully, as we look back through this replay, I don't see any clear shift forward in his tibia. Every time we see an athlete land on a straight leg like this, especially where their trunk is tilted over that affected side, something like an ACL injury, an ACL sprain, even just a partial tear is always on the differential with this type of mechanism. But I don't think we have to worry about any of that, of course, because Embiid was able to come back into the game. But when you land with your knee flexed then and then have a little bit of twist as you come down, that compressive axial force and the twist can irritate that meniscus. And so I suspect that he very well could have re-irritated the meniscus. And when you land in this position, you put a lot of stress on that patellar tendon or quad tendon in the front of the knee, because as you land, the knee is flexed. And so in order to prevent him from going all the way down to the ground, the patellar tendon in the front, the quadriceps tendon are gonna be loaded to maintain that constant degree of knee flexion. So you could also potentially strain that patellar tendon. Based on the fact that we've seen this happen now three times since Embiid has returned, it's hard to be confident about him sustainably being healthy with that knee for the rest of a long playoff run. Because with each subsequent irritation, even if there's not a true new specific injury, I suspect there's gonna be continuous progression of pain. The minutes only get harder, the impact only gets more, the minutes only get more intense, and there's more opportunity for you to have inflammation, swelling that builds up within that knee as the playoffs continue. And so for game one, for Embiid to already look like this, have another irritation. I'm just concerned about how sustainable this is for the long-term playoff run. Now, there is a difference when we talk about a true new injury versus just irritation and pain. But really what this is gonna come down to in terms of is there a new injury, is this just residual pain, is what the knee does in terms of swelling. So when we look here at the front of a knee, of course, the meniscus is that little cushion pad of cartilage that sits on the outside compartment, and then there's a medial meniscus on the inside. If we get rid of our femur here, and then our ACL, PCL, and MCL, we can see that meniscus top down. It's important to realize that the meniscus is not just a cushion or a shock absorber. That's how we often describe it. But the meniscus is really important for just the stability of the knee as well. And so if you have deficiency in the function of that meniscus to stabilize the joint, you can get more instability. The rest of the ligaments get more stress. The cartilage is gonna be under more stress. And so there's more opportunity for extra load on parts of the knee that aren't designed for that load when you have a meniscus injury or you have a less optimal meniscus because of previous surgery with removal of part of that meniscus. So what's gonna be a key here over the next 24 hours? Does Embiid's knee swell up? The meniscus are structures that are inside the joint. And so if there's a new tear in that meniscus, swelling will develop inside the knee and tomorrow we'll hear about Embiid having a swollen knee or an effusion. If his knee is swollen tomorrow, then I think there's real concern that they're gonna have to back him off. They might have to rest him for a game or two or reevaluate if there's a new injury in that meniscus. Sometimes meniscus tears can have a little bit of a delayed presentation where there's pain, he had surgery, so it's hard to know in the moment, was this just some irritation of that cartilage? Was there really a true new injury versus just some new pain? But how that knee responds over 24 hours in terms of swelling will tell the medical staff if there's a new injury that needs further evaluation. But even if there's no new tear in the meniscus, that cartilage can get injured, that cartilage can get irritated, causing swelling in the knee, causing pain that's only gonna continue to accumulate 
despite Embiid being extremely tough and able to play through this. So just to recap this whole mechanism one more time, as Embiid comes down, he lands, that knee goes into flexion. There's a little bit of twist as his body is falling over to the side. And so a perfect position that can put additional stress on that meniscus or potentially the patellar quadricep tendon in the front of the knee. So those would be the two areas that I'd be worried about a new injury. But just in general, you can always have aggravation and irritation to that cartilage within the joint. Now, none of this is a knock against Embiid. The fact that he's been able to come back on the court every time this has happened and continue to playing through is just a testament to how tough he is. But I'm concerned that eventually it's gonna add up to the point where he's just not gonna be effective or he's gonna have too much pain to be able to function. We're very early in the playoffs. I think there's just unfortunately real concern that we're gonna see another series affected by injury. Let me know your thoughts down below and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.